Good afternoon, I'm Malcolm Jordan and this is your Midday News Fix for Thursday the 25th of January. Lower inflation is changing the landscape for businesses. Figures released yesterday show the CPI rose an encouraging 4.7% in the year to December. Economic Research Institute principal economist Christina Leong says businesses now have demand concerns rather than issues with staffing shortages. Leong says tensions and conflicts globally also aren't helping Kiwi businesses. But if the uncertainty was to cause households and businesses to rein in spending uh, because of concerns about the outlook here, then that has the potential to put downside pressure on prices. Senior Labour MP Ginny Anderson says it was a bad look for Axe David Seymour to snub Ratana. Prime Minister Chris Luxon attended the annual celebrations in Whanganui yesterday with his national cohort and New Zealand first in tow. But third coalition party ACT was noticeably absent. The party is facing pushback from many iwi over its bid to redefine treaty principles. Anderson told ZB Wellington Mornings it's poor leadership. If you're going to put yourself above the parapet and say let's have a debate on the treaty, I think at the very least you need to turn up and have that debate. A woman's been charged with being an accessory after the fact to murder in relation to the death of Christchurch man David Bridgewater. The 38-year-old was found dead on Aranui's Carisbrook Street next to his own car that was still running in the early hours of January 4. Detective Senior Sergeant Colin Bailey says a 51-year-old woman has been charged with accessory after the fact. She's due in the Christchurch District Court this morning. The government's ambition to lift world trade will be front of mind as the minister in charge heads overseas. Todd McClay is travelling to the World Trade Organisation in Switzerland to prepare for next month's ministerial conference. He'll then visit his counterpart in the United Arab Emirates. McClay says the coalition wants to reboot negotiations on a free trade agreement with the Gulf Co-op, uh, cooperation Council. Also a chance to talk about bilateral trade with the UAE. They are a very big importer of goods and services from New Zealand. There are chances to streamline some of those processes so that we can actually sell them more. The number of first home buyers in the property market is higher than it's ever been. CoreLogic's latest findings reveal a strong finish for the year for first home buyers, bringing their annual market share to a record 25.8%. Chief property economist Kelvin Davidson says this may be the biggest property market success story of 2023. He says there's been some challenges for investors, giving first home buyers more opportunities. They've been using KiwiSaver for at least some of the deposits tapping low deposit lending allowances at banks. It's compromising on property type, property location, just their willingness to get on the property ladder. And accounting firms say the sell-off of boomer businesses is picking up as owners reach retirement age. To sport, a Black Caps boost for the men's Super Smash 2020 elimination final tomorrow in Hamilton. East Sodi, Matt Henry and fit again Kyle Jamieson join Canterbury, while Devon Conway and newly crowned ICC Men's Breakthrough Player of the Year, Russian Ravindra, bolster Wellington. Ex-Celtics, Clippers and 76ers coach Doc Rivers has agreed a deal to take over the NBA's Milwaukee Bucks. And the Red Bull-owned Alpha Tauri Formula One team has been rebranded for the 2024 season and will be known as Visa Cash App RB. I'm Malcolm Jordan. That's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at 5pm from the Newstalk ZB Newsroom.